You know, they say that babies don't come with manuals. Sure, it's a shame that we don't have a book where we could uh, raise a child in the way that they should go. But thankfully, conventional wisdom tells us that there are four parenting styles. There's authoritative, high standards, high response, authoritarian, high standards, low response, permissive, low standards, high response, and uh, uninvolved, low standards, low response. I think to myself, I got four children. One style per child. <laughs> Odds are in my favor. I'm bound for parenting success. Hey, Aaron, Isabel, it's time to eat. Uh, wash up. Let's go. Well, that was pretty quick. Did you uh, did you wash your hands with uh, the whole ABC song and all that? Oh, you must be practicing the Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number 1 in B-flat minor, which we've been teaching about, huh? Yeah, humming that? Did you do that? That's fun. You like that. You like that. You like that, don't you? Oh, would you? Well, because you haven't done enough. i tell you what. Go on back and uh, try it again. Just uh, hum through the first movement, okay? All right, great. Thanks a lot. And thanks for not complaining, because... When you complain, I just have to talk more to convince myself that I've convinced you that my standards for you are something that you love. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you even wash your hands, Isabel? This again. Dad, I'm 17. Besides, I always wash my hands uh, and I sing the concerto. You even. talking back to your father? Go wash your hands and I want to hear you on that concerto now. Unbelievable. Oh, there she is. <laughs> My favorite. I know, you're not supposed to have favorites, but this princess here, look at her, huh? <laughs> you're My favorite. Oh, you didn't too hot? Sure, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna eat that anyway. I didn't really, wasn't hungry. Good, I'm glad you guys are all back. Uh, your report cards came in the mail. Aaron, I'm gonna start with yours. You got, yeah, help yourself. That's okay. Uh, you got all A pluses, but you got an A in math. You want to tell me how you feel about that A? Probably a little bummed out. Did you talk to your teacher about that and how to get that up? I'm sure you wanted to, right? Uh, but I tell you what, all summer I've got planned all these math activities for you. You're going to have a blast. Even on vacation, we're going to have some fun math time, right, family? Right? For you. <laughs> all right, uh, Isabel, your turn. Your report card, oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, sure, A-pluses, but uh, you have one A in calculus. What's wrong with you? I'm so disappointed. You know what? I'm, you're going to raise that A if it takes you all summer in your room, and I don't want you coming out until you're done. I want an A-plus. Or you're not my daughter. Okay. And Zoe, uh, your report card? Now let's see, you got some uh, got some C's, a couple D's there, and an F in math and science. Uh, so what's that? Dad, I hate school! Oh, well, you know who else hated school? Albert Einstein. Am I ready? Hey, your report cards come in? Oh, they're still out in the mailbox. Yours is, at least. Oh, okay. Are you guys eating? Wait, are we filming too? Whatever. Dad, this is boring. I'm leaving and you don't even ask me why, ever! <laughs> what I love about her, she's so spontaneous and full of life, am I right? Oh, Dad, I think she's climbing up to church again. Oh. Not again. She's such a monkey, isn't she? Look, can I be honest with you? 
I'm not exactly sure which parenting style is the most beneficial for my children. But after seeing an excerpt like that from my family life, I'm guessing you're all thinking, <laughs> success all the way around, you can't go wrong. That said, do you really want to know the true test of a parenting style? It all comes down to conflict. How well can you resolve conflict among your kids in the home? And that's what I want to show you how to do next. What I want to do is catch my kids at their worst, fighting at each other's throats. I mean, really being angry and hateful. But since I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to have to manufacture that scenario. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and written up uh, a number of insults for my kids to put each other down. And when they're really angry, when they're really going at it, then I'm going to swoop in and I'm going to resolve that conflict for them. I thought it'd be a great idea to catch them in that and put it all online for everyone to see, right? Now, now that I think of it, yeah, I'm starting to question myself as a father and as a pastor of families. Okay, everyone, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call you up by twos, so sibling and sibling, and then I'm going to hand you a half a sheet of paper on which you'll find an insult that I'm going to ask you to use to put everyone down, okay? Now, to help us create this conflict, which is what we're going for, uh, we're going to ask, uh, enlist your cousin to really egg you on, kind of fire you up, so that you guys are really extremely mad at each other, and then uh, we're going to show the good people tuning in how to fix the conflict, all right? This is what we do to fix conflicts. Everybody on board? Ready to go? I'll get it. Okay, okay. Okay, so Uncle Bill, uh, can, can I call you Bill? Um, that's a horrible idea. I'm talking just the worst. Like, scar your kids for life type of bad, like years and years and years of therapy. But I'm all in. Uh, do you need like a weapon or something? I. Uh, no, Dad, let's let's think this through. I agree with Jonah, except for the weapon part. That does not sound like good parenting. Like, at all. Dad, is this even biblical? I mean, I'm trying really hard to see if this even relates to the Bible at all. I'm game, Dad. I've had these things bottled up for years. So, Dad, are we going to get paid for this? All right, uh, Luther, let's have you go first. Insult, Aaron. Uh, read what's on your, your sheet. This okay. is good. Aaron, you are so oblivious, you can't even remember your own birthday. Oh, no. It's 10, 10, 10. Oh, uh, no, it's actually 10, 12, 10. But I don't understand why we're doing this, because he's pretty smart. You're ruining it. Just just read. Stick to the script. Uh, okay, Aaron, just you insult. You insult Luther. Go ahead. What's up with your face, Luther? Why is there a dead caterpillar there on your lip? I actually think it looks pretty manly. No, guys, just read the script. Ah, Zoe, Isabel, you're up. Okay, your brothers completely blew that, so just, Isabel, uh, read the insult. Insult your sister. Come on. Okay. Uh, Zoe, you're terrible at basketball. Can you even dribble? Dad, have you even been to any of Zoe's games? She's actually pretty good at basketball. You don't, you're not getting the... Ugh. Just, just read the insult. Insult your sister, please. This you know what's worse than suffering in quarantine? Having to listen to Isabel's constant singing. Dad, I think Isabel's singing is actually pretty good. I enjoy it. You guys don't. Ugh. No, no, we need a conflict. Um, just okay. Just hold up. Uh, here's a conflict. You want to see conflict? Hey, uh, honey, just wanted to let you know we ran out of space on the hard drive, so I had to delete uh, our only copy of our wedding video. But uh, I did want to mention last night's meatloaf. It was really good. Not as good as my mom would make, but it was all right. Oh, and uh, by the way, I uh, ended up ordering a 70-inch TV now from Amazon. You okay with that? Is that the kind of conflict you wanted, Dad? Oh, I'm on the couch again. Welcome to episode three of The Home. Tonight's emphasis is on conflict. Conflict and how to resolve it. Now, before I get going, I am absolutely being serious now. 
And uh, the cue for you to know that I'm actually being serious. Uh, after poking some fun at parenting styles and how we try to address conflict and the idea of uh, being the best parents we can, whenever you see the backdrop not being the office, that's when you know that uh, we're being serious. Of course, whenever I'm interviewing my kids too, that's when uh, we're being absolutely serious. So I'm hoping that you enjoyed the episode so far. We took a look at, just to get our bearings, four different parenting styles that conventional wisdom has taught us. And there's some good things with that, even though I kind of poke fun at all of them. But I do want to start off with the emphasis. You know, God has not left us alone in the dark about parenting. I kidded a little bit about how there's no manual, and that's what we say, you know, that comes with a baby. But that's not true. The Bible, the Holy Scriptures, it's all sufficient for every matter of life, for every good work, which includes, of course, what's paramount, parenting. And you think about Proverbs 22, where the Lord says, yes, raise a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not stray from it. What is that training? Well, Ephesians 6, right? Fathers, do not exasperate your children, but raise them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. God very much has a style of parenting he's looking to see in all parents. Or we think about Proverbs 22, right, which talks about the kind of application of parenting that God's looking for. That same chapter where it says, raise a child in the way they should go, also says, folly is bound up in the heart of a child. And the rod of discipline, discipline is a loving uh, measure used against a child from a loving parent to help correct them, uh, making sure that we use the measure of God, that rod of discipline, that'll drive that folly far from the heart. And what is that rod? It's really law and gospel which leads us to conflict resolution. How do we resolve conflict when our children fight against each other? Or or when we fall short as parents and we don't parent as we should, right? When we abuse those four different styles and do so to our children's harm and maybe to our pride. God would have us administer the message of the law and the gospel. God wants us every time, and this is what Christian parenting is. It's a million conversations. It's an opportunity to give grace. It's not something that our children uh, put us out about and uh, something that it just frustrates us. It shouldn't be that way. But when our children fall short and when there's a conflict, or if we do, God invites us to point that out, the source. And that's our sinful nature. That their sinful nature is the source and reason for the conflict, even if uh, even if maybe the other one is more at fault. Uh, and see, that's the thing, that children are the least likely to own their sin. Well, we adults too. Because by nature, what do we do? By nature, we blame everyone and anything else but our own hearts. And God has a problem with our hearts. God came to give us a new heart in Christ. And so every time to be Christian parents where we model not our own uh, style and our own character, but God's character for us. We need to point out their sinful nature is the root cause for all their problems and all conflict in family life. But don't just leave it there. We also want to apply God's grace. Specifically, we want to say, but Jesus died for that too, and that's why you need Jesus. And I need Jesus, and to own that as well. You got your sinful nature from me. Our conversation should be full of that kind of language. And if it's not, we're really falling short. We're falling short of being the parents that God calls us to be. Again, our conversations need to be peppered with law and gospel. The news about our sinful nature, the threats and the condemnation, and the grace that comes from knowing Jesus. So much of parenting is all about curbing outward behavior. And that does no good in the long run because it only, it only makes Pharisees out of all of us or brings children to despair. And with that, you can be sure there's going to be brokenness in our families. And with that, we might even see our children just abandon us entirely. So how critical it is to apply grace, to apply grace, to be parents that no matter what style we use, grace prevails. So I want to encourage you parents Continue to reflect upon your style. Continue to reflect upon the content of your style. What are you and I trying to communicate? And ultimately, let it be grace. Grace, which I know I need as a parent, and I'm so glad I have, which I want to communicate to you tonight, too. You're loved, Mom and Dad. You're forgiven. And God has such beautiful plans for you as you look to raise your child in the way that they should go. Give them grace. 
always give them grace. Let's take a look and ask my children what they think about my parenting style and uh, what is at the heart and soul of it all. I pray that they see grace. Let's take a look. Sitting here with Aaron. How are you? Good. Good. All right. Uh, I got a couple questions. Talking about discipline today. Talking about conflict resolution. Uh, Aaron, when you when you sin against your siblings or against your mom or dad, what what do we do? Discipline. And what what uh, what would we do that for? Why would we discipline you? Because you love me. We do. Yeah. You're right. We do. All right. Uh, can you tell me what are some things that we do when we discipline you? Um, like take away our screen times or make us like vacuum chores, right? Yeah. Chores aren't too bad of a consequence, are they? They aren't too bad. Probably should do those anyway, right? Yeah. Like every day. No. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? When 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 you were really young, what do we do? Spanking. Spanking. Did did that help you learn? Was that loving? Was it good? You sure? Yeah. Okay. You're not scarred by that or anything? No. All right. And uh, what would, you know, the biggest thing, when we, uh, when we pointed out that you had sinned, what do we definitely want to make sure that you know? That you love me. All right. And who else? Mom. <laughs> okay. Mom loves you. Okay. <laughs> but who else? Jesus. Jesus. And what did he do about that sin? Die on the cross. Die on the cross, right? So you are forgiven. And uh, there are some consequences in this life, but you're loved, right? Okay. That's all I got. Do you want to go back to your screen time? Mm-hmm. And what happens if you don't uh, listen to us? Discipline. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We're with uh, Zoe right now. And uh, doing well? Yep. Always. And uh, staying away from heights, huh? <laughs> you monkey. All right. Uh, <laughs> sorry. All right. We're talking about conflict resolution. So, Zoe, can you walk us through the steps? Your mom and dad take you through every time you fight with your siblings or maybe you've disobeyed us or whatever. What, what, are we, uh, what, are, what steps do we point you through? Well, just today, um, Isabel and I were actually fighting over stupid stuff. and Was um, it her fault? No, it was my fault. Okay. Yeah. And um, you told us to come over, and then you talked to us, and you told us that we are, we have sinned and that it's not just the other person. Like, you're not 100% blameless on any of it because you do not love like Jesus loved. And then after that, he'll show us that we are forgiven and that we should forgive each other and, like, the grace that Jesus has died on the cross and so that we are forgiven. Do I do that, like, a lot? Like, when you guys yeah. fight? Yeah. What's a constant thing? Like, where? when I ask, where's that coming from when you guys are fighting? You ask, like, you well, you ask me, where's that coming from? And then I, it's always the sinful nature, but I'm a little bit stubborn to respond, like, <laughs> sinful nature because I know that I'm in the wrong. And that's, it's hard. Yeah, it is hard to swallow, swallow your pride. And it is funny, like, sometimes, like, so where's that coming from? And she will beat around the bush yeah. and just resist and resist. Till finally, she'll say, my sinful nature, Dad. Yeah. Right. But you remember, right, that grace. That's why Jesus came, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we do. We point that out. Um, I'm going to save that next question for Luther. So, yeah, okay. So when we find you guys fighting... We strive, and we should do this all the time, but we strive to point out the need for repentance, the need to see that this is my sin, this is my heart at fault, and uh, my sinful nature's got the better of me, and I need to drown that in holy baptism and give forgiveness. All right? Anything else about discipline, conflict resolution? No, I think that's it. It's just sin and grace. Sin and grace. All right, uh, here with Luther, and uh, episode three, we got four total episodes, so we're almost there. Yep. <laughs> so he's been a good sport about this all of them, man. So my question for uh, Luther today, talking about conflict resolution, is uh, when your parents, when your mom and dad, uh, fall short, when we lose our temper, when we lash out at you guys, uh, what do you find us striving to do uh, as well? What, what's your impression? 
Well, most of the, like, almost all the time, I just, that I can remember, you guys are always quick to apologize for, like, your wrongdoings. If, if you yelled at us or something, you're always quick to do that, and it's really refreshing, because... It's more your mom. Yeah. Because I, when do I mess up? <laughs> okay, no. I always have to make a joke. That's probably one annoying thing for my, my kids. I always have to make a joke. So you, you find us following the same pattern, striving to swallowing our pride, saying, you know, I sinned, um, and I'm sorry, and I ask for your forgiveness. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's grace, right? Okay. I haven't answered that question. You're going to do cookie monster. Cookies. 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 I'm not good at cookie monster. No, you're, you're obviously not. This is Isabel. She has her Cookie Monster shirt on. She wanted to do this interview with Cookie Monster, but I said no. That's that's good parenting. <laughs> so, uh, Isabel, I've been asking questions about conflict resolution, and uh, generally, I'm, I'm going to ask you just straight up because this video has also been about parenting styles, um, standards. What what kind of what what standard or standards? Have your parents set for you in life? Well, you guys don't set like really like hard standards that make us feel like pressured. But I think the one standard is just, I mean, it's more like important because you care. It's like, hey, hold on to your faith. That's the most important thing. So, so if anything we ask, the only thing yeah. we want for you. Well, that is the most important thing. All right. You so have you other ask other standards, things, right, but right. like. They're not as important. And like I was saying before, you kind of set these standards in your head more than you actually spelled them out for us. So you had mentioned, like, standards like, we want you to get good grades. Yeah. Have your parents ever told you that we want you to get good grades? No, actually. I don't think we really ever did. But why, why do you sense that we want you to get good grades? Well, I always get good grades because it gives God glory and I'm using my... Abilities to the best I can. Um, yeah. So somewhere along the line, we instilled that in you. Like, hey, do all that you have, uh, all that you can, for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And why would we do that? Because, I mean, God has done so much for us, and he blessed okay. us. Kind it's so a, cool. It, yeah. Basic, kind of a basic Sunday school question for you. Jesus. Jesus. All right, I'm with Jonah. I have to say it's been enjoyable having him here. Uh, for quarantine, and uh, Evers has lifted the safer at home, so sadly Jonah's going to be leaving uh, in a couple days. We're going to try to get this last episode filmed with him in it, though, because that'll be fun for me at least. Um, all right, hey, I got a question for Jonah. We were talking, obviously, parenting styles, and uh, this is a cool thing because I can ask him about uh, what his thoughts about the most important thing as far as parenting goes when you're 20, 20 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So he's an adult now. He can give full perspective on his parents' parenting. And I didn't ask their permission, so... <laughs> How do you like that, Shane? <laughs> That's my brother. All right. Um, tell me, Jonah, growing up, reflecting on how your mom and dad, awesome people, I might be biased, but uh, how they raised you, what... Uh, what what would you say is something that really stood out about your mom and dad parenting? The fact that no matter what, if we were ever going to make any decision or no matter what we wanted to do, they would never, like, they never had, like, these crazy expectations for us in any way. They'd always say, the only thing we care about is that you love God more than anything. And we'll always be your parents. We will always be here. We'll always love you. That won't change. And so what I hear, like the emphasis of grace and the need for grace and the need for Christ in your life, right? So, And you had said, too, in another conversation that your parents always said, whatever you would do, you can always come to us. Yes. Right? right. right. So we can always come to them, no yeah. matter what we've done or whatever is going to happen. And we, they want to know, not to say like there won't be consequences, but that's also done out of love. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought, very cool. Very cool. Um, all right. So, let me, I've got another thing. Uh, oh. Tell me about when your dad said about your faith, like because yeah. the emphasis, right, among the Mondays, and, and I think we got this from Grandma and Grandpa Monday as far as the Monday family, but um, the importance of faith. What did your dad say to you about that? Well, my dad always says, I don't care what you do in life, but like never lose your faith. And if you do ever start to lose your faith or he notices that in me, 
he will take the time to come find me, sit on me, and he will just sit on me until I recant. Until he, <laughs> until he changes his mind and has faith. Thanks, Jonah, for uh, your insight today. And again, it's been fun. Look at me, I'm Peter Pan. I feel like I can fly. Woo! No junk for Jesus. No!